These are the blueprint for many of your traits, but how does a code that is kept in the nucleus result in a protein that results in an observable trait, such as brown eyes? There are two main stages required for the flow of information from gene to protein, transcription and translation. Let's take a closer look at translation, the synthesis of a polymer of amino acids or a polypeptide under direction of an mRNA template. Once the mRNA has been made by transcription, it leaves the nucleus and travels out into the cytoplasm of the cell to begin the process of translation. One of the main components of translation is an RNA molecule known as transfer RNA or tRNA. This molecule has the very important function of making sure the mRNA molecule is read correctly and that the correct amino acids are assembled based on the mRNA codons. Each codon consists of three RNA bases that code for a specific amino acid, and each tRNA molecule has an anticodon which base pairs with the complementary codon. Each tRNA molecule also has a binding site for an amino acid corresponding to the codon in the mRNA that the tRNA recognizes. For example, this tRNA is bound to the codon UCG at one end, which codes for the amino acid serine and is bound to serine at the other end. Each codon is read and turned in translation, so tRNA is effectively acting as a translator, translating a nucleic acid word, a codon, to a protein word, an amino acid. Before we look at the steps involved in translation in detail, let's briefly review the structure of a ribosome, which reflects its function of bringing together the mRNA with the tRNAs carrying amino acids. Ribosomes consist of a small and a large subunit that come together when it is time to synthesize proteins. In addition to a binding site for mRNA, which is found in the small subunit, each large subunit has three binding sites for tRNA. The P site holds the tRNA carrying the growing polypeptide chain, while the A site holds the tRNA carrying the next amino acid. The E site is the exit site, where used tRNAs are released from the ribosome. Like transcription, translation occurs in three main steps. The first is called initiation. Here, an initiation complex is formed when the small ribosomal subunit binds to both mRNA and a specific initiator tRNA. The 5' cap of the mRNA binds to the small subunit of the rRNA, which then moves along the mRNA until it reaches the start codon. This happens every time mRNA gets translated, so the first amino acid on every polypeptide chain will be methionine. Once this happens, the large subunit of the ribosome joins the complex to form a large molecule, aligning the A site of the ribosome with the second mRNA codon. The initiator tRNA sits in the P site of the ribosome. The second step of translation is called elongation. Here, an incoming tRNA is brought to the A site and a peptide bond is formed between the new amino acid in the A site and the growing polypeptide chain in the P site. This step moves the polypeptide from the tRNA in the P site and attaches it to the new amino acid in the A site, leaving the tRNA in the P site empty. As the ribosome moves forward, the empty tRNA that was in the P site is now moved to the E site, and the tRNA with the growing polypeptide is moved to the P site. This cycle is repeated until a stop codon is reached. This is the final stage of translation and is called termination. A protein called a release factor binds to the stop codon and causes the polypeptide to disconnect from the tRNA in the P site. The ribosomal subunits and mRNA then separate. 
The movement of mRNA out of the nucleus and its translation on the ribosome describes protein synthesis in eukaryotic cells, which contain a nucleus. In prokaryotes, organisms that do not possess nuclei, the same events of transcription and translation occur, but with slight modifications. Since prokaryotic cells lack membrane-bound organelles, the entire process takes place in the cytoplasm. It also happens faster because translation can begin before the entire mRNA molecule is transcribed. This is called transcription-translation coupling. Processing of mRNA is not necessary in prokaryotes, as there are no entrance sequences to be spliced out and no nuclear membrane to traverse. As a result, prokaryotic mRNAs lack the 5' end cap and poly-A tail, and a different method of initiation of translation is needed. Prokaryotes use a special nucleotide sequence before the AUG start codon to begin transcription. Another key difference is that prokaryotic mRNA is polycystronic, meaning that it is one transcript that codes for more than one protein, whereas most eukaryotic mRNAs are monocystronic, coding for just one protein. Finally, ribosomes in prokaryotes are smaller than those in eukaryotes and contain different RNA sequences. This has proven to be beneficial as certain antibiotics target the ribosomes of bacteria specifically, which means the infection can be destroyed without hurting the cells of the person who is ill.